We are back on Fresh Outlook. Parkinson's disease is a progressive ailment, and while research has made breakthroughs in the fight against the disease, it still does not have a cure. And it starts often with a minor tremor, but often time, over time, it affects every aspect of one's motor skills. Parkinson's disease is a progressive disorder of the nervous system, which affects several regions of the brain, especially those which control balance and movement. Parkinson disease can also affect emotions and cognition. Parkinson disease affects more than one million people in North America and more than four million globally. Although medications can offer some control over the symptoms, there is currently no cure for the disease. Because the disease impairs basic tasks such as walking, talking, and eating, the disease can cause additional anxiety and depression, on top of that already caused by the attack on the brain. Parkinson existed mostly in the shadows until it struck high-profile actor Michael J. Fox. As soon as I wake up, I can't go back to sleep. I mean, it starts going. So, so I, I would say that's the toughest part in the morning is, is to kind of go, well, I'm up whether I like it or not. I'm up now. April is Parkinson's Awareness Month. With increased awareness, more light takes the disease out of the shadows and hopefully fuels new efforts into treatments and a cure. Now, to discuss latest advancements and treatment for Parkinson's disease, or Dr. David Dickoff, he's president of Metropolitan Neurological Consultants. We have psychologist Dr. Mark Rossi sticking around as well, and Tom Hornoff with Synergy Home Care. We welcome all of you to the panel today. We have been discussing this over this past month. We want to take this particular segment to discuss what happens when you have a loved one, a family member, and you have to manage this disease to its conclusion. And it must be very difficult. So let's start, if we can, with uh, you, Tom. You know, you've seen patients as well in their, in their home struggle with this. It must be a terrible journey because we know where it ends. It is, it is. And, and oftentimes the, the family member tries to care for the person mm -hmm. with Parkinson's and that causes a, a tremendous amount of of uh, effects on that family member and the family in total. So we see those effects and of course it's probably better when a private caregiver handle it or the facility handle the care. And Dr. Dickoff, you mentioned something as well. There's something called Parkinson's disease psychosis. Explain this to us. Yeah, when Parkinson's disease was first described 200 years ago, actually that long. In 1817 by James Parkinson, he described the major motor manifestations of Parkinson's disease, the tremor, the slowness, the shuffling, the things that cause uh, progressive um, mobilization problems, falling, complications. But more recently we've learned that Parkinson's is really a systemic disease affecting cognition, affecting mood, causing uh, behavioral abnormalities including um, hallucinations, mm -hmm. delusions, paranoia. These could be the most disruptive aspects of the disease when it comes to caregivers as well. And uh, more recently, we're trying to bring attention to these matters and bring it forth to the public. I wonder why we don't know, after 200 years, what exactly causes it? Well, we uh, are learning a lot, particularly in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. The federal funding that was the decade of the brain in the 1990s has caused amazing advances in Parkinson's disease. But we still we, don't know what causes it. Well, not exactly, but we're closing in on it, Frank. Okay. We've, we're learning the protein, it's a specific protein called alpha-synuclein mm -hmm. that is accumulating in the brain cells and other cells in the body that ultimately causes these cells to die and degenerate. And hopefully we'll find ways to stop the accumulation of this particular protein in the years to come. We're going to get back to that in just a moment. Dr. Rossi, of course, you owned for many years a, a company that dealt with nursing home patients. Yeah. You saw what was going on, especially with some of your patients who I suffered did. from Parkinson's disease. What can you tell us about this on the psychological uh, end of it? Well, Parkinson's as well as Alzheimer's and some other degenerative diseases causes great stress on the caregivers. I've seen a lot of CNAs, the certified nursing assistants, crying while they're taking care of, uh, of residents in nursing homes. Uh, the, the pressure on them because they're not making the progress that they would like to see and they get to really like this particular patient and they, they don't have the inroads, they, they're not as effective as they want to be. And the same for family members as well. They just cannot come to grips with this disease process. So it puts enormous pressure on the caregivers. And, and uh, Parkinson's is filled with, you know, patients who have sleepless nights, mm -hmm. varying behavior problems, <coughs> a lot of depression, a lot of depression with agitation. So the caregivers have to deal with that as well. And family members have to deal with all of this. 
the physical end and the psychological. It's a lot to deal with. Now, Tom Hornoff, it must be difficult for the caregiver. Yes. Absolutely. But the family member remembers that young man or woman in their, in their wonderful youth, and now here they are struggling with this. It must be especially difficult for them to deal with it on a daily basis. Yes, it is, Frank. Um, the family member remembers when, that, when the, the spouse or other family member was strong and, could, and cared for them, possibly, and certainly for themselves, but now they're relegated to an incapacitated state. What advice can you give a, a family member whose loved one has this particular disease in, in managing and dealing with it? That's a great question. First and foremost, probably care for yourself because it's such a difficult disease to deal with. As a family member, you, you go, your, your own self suffers and your own health suffers and you can't care for someone else if you're not caring for yourself first. So that would be first and foremost. Um, try to maintain some humor in your life. Have outlets for stress reduction those kind of things and and just kind of know the disease to the point where you know that with all the symptoms it presents that maybe at one point things look good and the, the patient seems to be doing fine but then minutes later or hours later or days later they've totally gone so what you're, you're talking about is to get to acceptance as quickly as possible and then deal with it from there yes absolutely doctor we, you mentioned a moment ago there have been some great advancements in dealing with this disease can you tell us any of them well, certainly, we, for the past 20 years, we've had an increasing number of medications that are particularly effective mm -hmm. in treating the gait dysfunction and the tremor. Mm -hmm. Part of the problem is that there's not enough awareness amongst family doctors and the public in general for early and prompt diagnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, the three motor manifestations, the tremor, for example, mm -hmm. is the most obvious thing. Uh, people know it, they recognize it, family members, So let doctors. me stop you there. If somebody has a tremor, mm -hmm. a family member has a tremor, is that always traced back to Parkinson's disease, or could they just say, um, yeah? No, in fact, the most common tremor is not from Parkinson's at all. Okay. It's a benign familial tremor seen in about 10% of the population. And what is that in layman's terms? Well, it's a, it's a tremor that you get when you're anxious, like your first date okay. or maybe being on TV <laughs> with you. <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> but the Parkinson's tremor starts later in life. Mm -hmm. It's asymmetrical, which people don't realize, starting on one side of the body. Right. And it's a rest tremor. Uh, the video that we showed before uh, was interesting because it showed people spilling food, but the fact of the matter is that Parkinson's patients don't spill that much. Mm -hmm. The tremor is a tremor that occurs at rest. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's a tremor that occurs when you're distracted. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you try to pay attention to it, you could actually control it. Mm -hmm. So the tremor occurs at rest, but when you reach for a coffee cup, yeah. generally speaking, the tremor subsides moderately. So what if, I'm, what, if I'm, uh, what if my family member starts exhibiting that kind of tremor? Well, bring it That's to the first sign. Bring it to a doctor you trust and have them take a look at it. But that would be the first sign that something is amiss. Sometimes, but not always. The, the tremor is overrated. In fact, about, about two-thirds of patients with Parkinson's ultimately get a tremor. Mm -hmm. A third never get it. And those are the more difficult to diagnose patients. Mm -hmm. When they start to shuffle, slow down, become unsteady on their feet, have difficulty getting into and out of cars, right. difficulty climbing steps. People who are not savvy about the disease might think this is a normal form of aging. People slowing down in their right. 70s or 80s. Okay. But it's not true and it's important to recognize it because that's actually the form with the worst prognosis. Mm -hmm. The tremor form is a little easier to deal with. Interesting. The rigidity form is the one that causes falls. Now, Tom, you mentioned you, when dealing with this, it's good to find outlets for your stress. Doctor, you, you come in contact as well with family members, right. uh, uh, some of your past and, and current patients. Do you recommend that as well? Or what do you say to the family member dealing with this on, uh, to ease their pain? Well, psychologists talk a lot about cognitive behavioral therapy, mm -hmm. okay? And obviously, if you change the way people think, you can change their behavior. And that, that goes for caregivers as well. If you could help them modify or change the way they're, they're thinking, understand the disease very well, and try to understand how they can get the most out of every day for their loved one. Uh, and you think about going down a positive road and a supportive role, they start to develop a little bit better uh, grip on this whole problem. But it must be very difficult to go down a positive road when you know that the end game here, unfa unfortunately, is the passing of your loved one. Well, look, look at the best example, perhaps, uh, Michael J. Fox. I mean, he's trying to get the most out of his life, mm -hmm. not the least. And I think that we, we need to focus more on that and, and what we can do and what, where we're going with this disease and helping caregivers and the patients. Muhammad Ali, another 
high-profile celebrity suffering from Parkinson's disease. Was his boxing career, did it have anything to do with it? Well, probably it did. There are changes in the brain that occur with repeated trauma. It's mm -hmm. a whole big issue now with concussion. You've yes, probably with been the aware NFL. of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and kids playing sports and soccer and heading the ball. I mean, the whole issue with concussion is that repetitive traumas to the brain, even minor ones, not to mention being hit vigorously, well, you get do cause pathological changes. Well, right? you get a Michael J. Fox, obviously not a boxer, mm -hmm. comes out of nowhere. Right, that's called idiopathic Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. And again, that's probably going to be due to the accumulation of his proteins over time. Tom, when you handle, or one of your employees handles uh, someone with Parkinson's disease, how do you keep them upbeat? Is there any way to keep them upbeat? Yes, the, the training and education are the big factors. Um, do they confide in you? Oh, yes, they do. And they're, you know, they take care notes and they're calling quite often. But do they confide in you, maybe tell you something they wouldn't tell a family member? Because oh, yes, yes. They would tell us first, mm -hmm. and then we would choose to tell the family member. Um, there are many times when, in fact, just yesterday in preparation, I, I spoke with one of my caregivers who's treating someone with Parkinson's, and she said one of the frustrating things was he freezes. He just freezes, and sometimes it's, it's a varied amount of time that it takes to get him moving again. You mean he'll just stop? He just stops and freezes. Exactly what he's doing, whether he's standing or whatever the yes. case may be. And that's common? Place? The scientific term for that is called freezing, in fact. Oh, okay. It happens so. in <laughs> middle and later stages of the disease, and it can happen either because a dose of medication is missed and people will gradually slow up, or it can occur quite suddenly in the middle, middle of movements or if a patient is distracted. Sometimes the simple act of going through a door frame or navigating around a piece of furniture mm -hmm. can cause Parkinson's mm -hmm. patients to freeze. Let me ask all of you, and I'll throw this out, how do you think Michael J. Fox is dealing with it and the foundation that he created is helping A, bring awareness to this and helping find a cure? Very positive situation. I think being able to express and show this to the public, uh, it, it'd be hard to quantify how, how important it would be. And in a lot of ways, Muhammad Ali is as big a star as Michael J. Fox, but for some reason he has elected not to do that. Uh, and, and he has lived quite a long time. What is the lifespan for someone who gets a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease? It's much better these days. It's probably 15 to 20 years after the mm -hmm. diagnosis. It's almost a normal life expectancy. Before the development of drugs in the 1960s through today right. for the treatment of the disease, the life expectancy was markedly reduced. What is the quality of life in that life expectancy? Well, it, it depends a lot on patient's outlook. It depends a lot on caregivers, and, and, and it, it also depends a lot on the communication of the people in the team, mm -hmm. particularly with a movement disorder specialist that could not predict, but have a better sense of the progression of the disease and what changes family right. and caregivers exactly. can expect. Can we expect a cure to this in the next 20 years, let's say? 20 years, Frank? Yes, I think so. You could say that? I think so. 20 years. Confidence. I was thinking even 10. Really? Yes. The, okay. the, the scientific advances are absolutely remarkable. And what about the psychological advancements with regard to Parkinson's? Well, when, when caregivers uh, uh, receive the training, they really absorb it. They really come to the sessions. They want to get something out of the sessions. And they really seem to be responsive to it. So again, getting the right psychological frame of reference for this disease for the caregivers is critical to, to them surviving and helping themselves deal with the disease and also getting the right uh, frame of reference for the patient so that the patient can deal with this uh, degenerative central nervous uh, disorder it, it really is a good way to go if you have a different thought process in handling the disease so it's your thinking that the psychological assessment of both the patient and family is absolutely critical it's very important that they understand the process and what they can do and what their limits are but understanding makes a big difference do you explain that to some of your patients that you can no longer do this and that's okay yes yes and and generally they they get that and they know that um, the support group is their support network is of utmost importance whether that's a caregiver family members friends I mean in the case of Michael J Fox he's got a huge support network mm -hmm. I mean he brings tremendous awareness I heard it asked of him in an interview has this disease kept you from doing anything in your life and he said absolutely nothing I do the same things with it that I would have done without it 
And he's done a lot of stuff. In fact, they had a sitcom not too long yeah. ago. And we and never, he wonderful. said he would never come back to television, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he did. And I think he did it partly because yeah. he wanted to work again and partly because he wanted right. to show yeah, people to show that if could. you have Parkinson's disease, you can work. Right. Again, it's not a death sentence, mm -hmm. at least not an immediate death sentence. Gentlemen, we thank you very much. Thank we appreciate you very your much. time, Doctor. Appreciate thank you. For oh, you don't have to stand up, but that's okay. And I'll just salute to you, Dr. Rossi. And when we return, TV host and physician Dr. Oz fights back against critics who claim he is pushing quack medicine. We'll be right back with that.